as the city was now cut off from all possible supplies, famine became more dreadful. Whole, uh, whole families fell a sacrifice to it, and the dead bodies of women, children, and the aged were seen covering roofs of houses and various recesses. Youth and the, and the middle-aged appeared like specters and fell many of them dead in public places. The dead became too numerous to be interred. Many died while attempting to perform this office. So great and awful because the calamities and that lamentation, uh, wait, awful because the calamities that lamentation ceased and an awful silence of despair overwhelmed the city. But all this failed of restraining the more ab abandoned from most horrid deeds, wait, but all this failed to, uh, failed, but all this failed of restraining the more abandoned for most horrid deeds. They took this opportunity to rob the tombs, and with loud infernal laughter, to strip the dead of their Inhabitants, uh, st uh, strip the dead of their inhabitants of death, and would try the edge of their sword on dead bodies and on some while yet breathing. Simon, uh, Geo, uh, Gioras, wait, Gioras, Gioras, now vented his rage against uh, Matthias, the high priest, and his three sons. He caused them to be condemned as though favoring the Romans. The father asked the favor to be first executed. The, fa the father asked the favor to be first executed and not to see the death of his sons. But the malicious Simon reversed him, uh, reserved him for the last execution. And as he was expiring, he put the insulting question whether the Romans would now relieve him. Things being thus, one uh, Manaios, a Jew, escaped to Titus and informed him of the consummate wretchedness of the Jews, that in less than three months, one hundred and fifteen thousand and eight hundred dead bodies of Jews had been conveyed through one gate under his care and register and he assured him of the ravages of famine and death. Other deserters confirmed the account and added that not less than 600,000 dead bodies of Jews had been carried out at different gates. Uh, the humane heart of Titus was deeply affected and he, under those accounts, and while surveying the piles of dead bodies of Jews under the walls 
and in the visible parts of the city, raised his eyes and hands to heaven in solemn uh, protestation that he would have prevented these dire calamities that the obstinate Jews had procured them upon their own heads. Now how's that for being so pitiful? <clears throat> Josephus, the Jew, now earnestly entreated the leader John and his brethren to surrender to the Romans and thus save the residue of the Jews. But he received in return uh, nothing but insolent reproaches and imprecations. John declared his firm persuasion that God would never suffer, suffer his own city, Jerusalem, to be taken by the enemy. Alas, had he forgotten the history of his own nation and the denunciations of the prophets? Uh, Micah had foretold that in this very calamity they would presumptuously lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? No evil shall come upon us. So blind and presumptuous are hypocrisy and self-confidence. The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. The famine in the city became, as might be expected, still more deadly. For want of food, of the Jews ate their belts, sandals, skins of their shields, dried grass, and even even order of cattle. Now, it was that a noble Jewess urged by the insufferable pangs of hunger slew and prepared for food her own infant child. <sighs> She had eaten half the horrible preparation when the smell of food brought in a horde of soldiery who threatened her with instant death if she did not produce to them the food she had in possession. She being thus compelled to obey produced the remaining half of her child, the soldiers, stood aghast, and the recital petrified the heavens, wait, and the recital petrified the hearers with horror, and, and congrat, on, con, congratulations were poured on those whose eyes death had closed upon such horrid scenes. Humanity seemed ready to sink at the recital of the woeful events of the day of that day. No words can reach the horrors of the situation of the female part of the community at this period. Such scenes force upon our recollections the tender pathetic address of our Savior to the pious females who followed him going to the cross 
Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the womb that never bear and the breast that never gave suck. Moses had long predicted this very scene. Wow. The tender and delicate woman among you, said he, who would not venture to set the sole of her foot on the ground for delicateness, her eyes shall be evil towards her young one and towards her children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them. For want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in thy gates. Probably the history of the world will not afford a parallel to this. God prepared peculiar judgments for peculiarly horrid crimes. These be the days of vengeance that all things that are written may be fulfilled. Josephus declares that if there had not been many credible witnesses to the awful fact, he never would have recorded it. For, said he, such a shocking violation of nature never has been uh, perpetrated by any Greek or barbarian. While famine thus spread desolation, the Romans finally succeeded in removing part of the inner wall and in possessing themselves of the high and commanding tower of Antonio, which seemed to overlook the temple. Titus, with his council of war, had formed a determination to save the temple, to grace his conquests, and remain an ornament to his empire. But God had not determined, and though there be many de devices in a man's heart, nevertheless the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. A Roman soldier violating the general order of Titus succeeded in hurling a brand of fire into the golden window of the temple and soon his righteous as righteous heaven would have it the sacred edifices was in flames. The Jews, uh, perceiving this, rushed with horrid outcries to extinguish the fire. Titus flew to the spot in, the, in his chariot with his chief uh, officers and legions with loud command and in every token of anxiety, he enforced the extinguishing of the fire, but in vain. So, so great was the confusion that no attention was paid to him. His soldiers, deaf to all cries, 
assiduously spread the flames far and wide, rushing at the same time on the Jews, sword in hand, slaying and trampling down or crushing them to death under the walls. Many were plunged into the flames and perished in the burning of the, of the buildings of the temple. The fury, wait, the fury of the Roman soldiers slaughtered the poor and unarmed and the rich as well as men in arms. Multitudes of dead bodies were piled round about the altar to which they had fled for protection. The way leading to the inner court was deluged with blood. <sighs> Titus, finding the fire had not reached the inner temple, entered it with his superior officers and surveyed in magnificence with a silent admiration. He found it to exceed all he had heard. This view led him to renew his efforts to save the stupendous pile of building, though as many of the outbuildings were gone, he even entreated the soldiery to extinguish the flames and appointed an officer to punish that any who should disobey. But all his renewed efforts were still in vain. The feeling at his soldiery were utterly unmanageable. Plunder ravaged and slaughter had combined to render them death and most furious. A soldier succeeded in firing the doorposts of the inner temple and the conflagration soon became general. One needed a heart of steel to contemplate the, six, the scenes which followed. The triumphant Roman soldiers were in a most unforgivable rage and fury. They were indeed instruments prepared for their work to execute the most signal vengeance of heaven. The flame of which was now reaching its height. The Romans slew of the Jews all before them, sparing neither age, sex, or rank. They seemed determined to annihilate the Jewish race on the spot. Priests and common people, those who surrendered and those who still fought, all were alike subjects to an indiscriminate slaughter. The fire of the temple at length completely enveloped the stupendous pile of buildings, the fury of the flames exceeded descriptions. It impressed on distant spectators an idea that the whole city was in flames. The ensuing disorder and tumult, Josephus pronounces, to have such as to baffle all description. The outcry of the Roman legions was as great as they could make. And the Jews, finding themselves a prey to the fury of both fire and sword, exerted themselves in the wildest Accents of screaming. The people in the city and those on the hill 
mutually responded to each other in groans and screeches. People who had seemed just expiring through famine derived new strength from unprecedented scenes of horror and death to deplore their wretchedness. From mountain to mountain and from place and places distance, lamentations echoed to each other. Take a little break. <laughs> 